Rodney King, Russia, and the Star-Spangled Banner are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is March 3rd. It is the 62nd day of the year. We got 303 days left. It's your ninth Thursday in your 10th week in the 73rd day of winter. We only got a little over two weeks left until spring, actually 17 days. If today's your birthstone, your birthstone is aquamarine, bloodstone, or jade. Today is National Soup It Forward Day. Not Pay It Forward, Soup It Forward. National Soup It Forward Day on March 3rd encourages us to deliver love and kindness by the bowl. We all know a warm cup of kindness comes in many forms. So make some soup at home, take it to someone you love, try not to poison them. All right, let's see what else March 3rd has given us. 1776, the American Revolutionary War. The first amphibious landing of the United States Marine Corps begins the Battle of Nassau. 1779, the American Revolutionary War again. The Continental Army is routed at the Battle of Briar Creek near Savannah, Georgia. 1875, the first ever organized indoor game of ice hockey is played in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, as recorded in the Montreal Gazette. 1891, Shoshone National Forest is established as the first national forest in the U.S. and the world. National Forest is different from the National Park System, I guess. 1910, Rockefeller Foundation. John D. Rockefeller Jr. announces his retirement from managing his business so that he can devote his time to philanthropy. Guy was big on building libraries. <laughs> 1918. Russia signs the Treaty of Breslikov, agreeing to withdraw from World War I and conceding German control of the Baltic states, Belarus, and Ukraine. In 1918, Russia was in a really bad place because of World War I. The Bolsheviks, who were led by Lenin and Trotsky, had taken Kiev like a month earlier. And on the 2nd of March, 1918, Germans took Kiev. So like I said, the Bolshevik leaders, Lenin and Trotsky, told their delegates, whatever they want us to sign, we're going to sign because they're going to roll us over, basically. In the previous two weeks, the Germans had captured over 60,000 Russian soldiers, almost 3,000 artillery pieces and about 5,000 machine guns. So they were in bad shape and they were looking to get out of World War I. They had pretty much lost their taste for battle. And the Germans told them until this treaty is signed, we're not stopping. So the Russians were in a hurry to sign it. The downside is they lost like 55 million people or a third of their population that would now be behind German lines. Now, in a way, Russia was not happy about this, but they were sort of OK with it because these weren't ethnically Russians. They were Poles, Ukrainians, people from Belarus. I don't know what they're called. Belarusian and a few other countries. Russia also agreed to give back 640,000 Austrians that had been captured during the war. They also lost most most of their coal production, which was going on in countries they had to give up, along with a lot of their agriculture, which led to bigger problems. They also had to agree not to be involved in any economic boycott when the war was over. If Germany lost, they were supposed to still keep doing business with Germany even if the Allies won and said nobody could do business with them. Here we are in 2022 and Russia's still trying to get Ukraine back. Ukraine had had sovereignty a few times and then they were owned by the Soviet Union and back and forth, back and forth. And the Germans, this wasn't their last foray into Ukraine. No, they came back in World War II. And this sucked for the Ukrainian people, especially the Ukrainian Jewish community. They were essentially decimated. It's sad. 1931, the United States adopts the Star Spangled Banner as its national anthem. This was the deep dive last year. Jumping way forward, 1991, an amateur video captures the beating of Rodney King by Los Angeles police officers. This was a turning point in policing in the United States. I mean, now people had video cameras and a lot of things changed. Now, I'm a firm believer in the 90-10 rule. 90% 90 of whoever goes into whatever job, they're doing a good job and they're trying at least. And then there's always that 10% that shouldn't be whatever. This goes for doctors, clergy, pharmacists, ambulance driver, firemen, and police. Some of the cops that were involved in this thing were part of that 10%. I had to deal with this. I was uh, in the military at the time, and when the Los Angeles riots busted out, I got activated for that. 2005, Steve Fawcett becomes the first person to fly an airplane nonstop around the world solo 
without refueling. 2017, the Nintendo Switch is released worldwide. Now, if you know the history of Nintendo, I hate their marketing strategy, and I often tried to discourage my kids from buying Nintendo things. Stick with like Xbox or PlayStation, whatever. Nintendo's a lot of fun. They just do this thing where they'll come out with a new system, like in this case, the Switch. They did it before with the Wii and they don't produce enough on purpose to drive up the need and the desire and, you know, fear of missing out type thing. They do it on purpose, and what I don't like about it is it affects a lot of kids that aren't really wealthy because it creates a black market on eBay or whatever, and so this Nintendo Switch that might have been going for $300 normally, you could find it only on eBay for $700. Who's going to buy their kid a $300 thing for $700? Someone that's got money. So some kid in East LA or the Oklahoma Outback who doesn't have a bunch of money really wants one, he doesn't get one because Nintendo created a shortage for marketing. It's not illegal and technically they're not doing anything wrong. It's just lame. Premiered on March 3rd, 2013 Vikings. This was such a good show. It's from the History Channel and it's about a Scandinavian farmer who becomes a Viking warrior and eventually the king. The series was created by Michael Hurst. This was such a good series and it pretty much followed the history of the Viking clans and what they did to Europe and all that. It is a very, very interesting television show. It's done by History Channel, so, you know, it's as close as they can get to history. Sure, they're going to Hollywood up a little bit to make it, you know, more entertaining to watch, but it follows the progression from Norway and Scandinavia to invading the British Isles and then on into Paris. The Vikings actually made it into Paris. Not many people know that. They think that they just maybe attacked England or things like that, but no, they actually went as far as Paris and a few other places. In the ninth century, they actually laid siege to Paris. If you ever get a chance, watch that show. I say that all the time about different things, but this is a great one to binge watch. I didn't even start watching it until it was like their third season and I fell in love with it. And then it ended and it depressed me and I watched every single episode twice. I can hardly wait. They're supposed to have a like prequel to it, a new series starting up, but I haven't heard anything about that since pandemic started. Born on March 3rd, 1970, Julie Bowen. She's an actress who played the role of Claire Dumphy on the hit sitcom Modern Family. She also played Denise Bauer for three years on Boston Legal. She was Carol Bessie in this show called Ed, which is easily one of my favorite television shows that was ever on. I love that show. She attended Brown University, majoring in Italian Renaissance studies. One of the first things I ever saw her in was Happy Gilmore. She played Adam Sandler's love interest. And there's this scene where someone tells him to go to his happy place. And he starts dreaming about her in lingerie, bringing him giant mugs of beer. I was like, that is every dude's happy place. Died on March 3rd, 2018, we lost David Ogden Stiers. Do you know who he is? Most people don't. He played the role of Charles Emerson Winchester on the TV show MASH. After Burns left, he's the guy that came in and stayed with Hawkeye and BJ in the swamp. He was another doctor. Great actor. Fun fact, he was in a comedy troupe or improv group with Rob Reiner when he was in Juilliard. He was in some great movies and shows. His first movie appearance was in THX 1138 or 1138, whatever you want to call it. That was George Lucas's feature film debut. He was in Oh God with John Denver and George Burns, The Cheap Detective, Magic, Man with One Red Shoe, Better Off Dead with John Cusick, which is a great movie. I liked him in Doc Hollywood with Michael J. Fox. That was another good movie of his. He came out as gay in 2009 and lived a nice quiet life in Newport, Oregon when he was getting older. And that's where he died at the age of 75 from complications related to bladder cancer. In his will, he made provisions for all his stuff going to like the Newport Symphony, Newport Public Library, and the Oregon Coast Council for Arts. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Now go out, have a productive day, and be nice to each other.